So this week what I'm going to do is I'm going to get into a video about gear in Ashes of Creation which is obviously both armour and weapons and together they'll be the equivalent to 40 to 50% of a player's total power in the game. But today we're going to be covering everything about armour and we're going to make a separate video for weapons because it's the Road to Alpha 2 series, I really want to cover them in detail as it's going to be a massive part of character progression and development in the game. But without rambling on anymore we're just going to jump into the video video and all the latest information we have. Just before we do jump into that, if you could hit the subscribe button, turn on notifications, it would help me out a lot and just let me know your thoughts in the comment section. So to get started with the basics of Ashes to Creation, we've got 9 slots for your armour. And the slot for your armour is helmet, shoulders, cloak, chest, wrists, gloves, belts, pants and boots. And in Ashes there's going to be no stat requirements for equipping gear apart from level and sometimes affiliation. So obviously straight away you could see that potentially if you want to go corrupted like some of these PK guild on alt or all guilds or just all characters, you could definitely get set grinded out and you'll be able to kit these guys up. So I do think there will be some corrupt guys, I don't really necessarily think it's a bad thing but I think some crying will come along with this to so do bear that in mind the way it looks at the minute. I think even with the debuffs, you're still gonna get some PKs out there. I genuinely don't think that's too much of a bad thing because then the bounty system thrives a little bit more. But that is one thing I've noticed straight away. Now, obviously, certain things with the affiliation, you're not gonna just make an alt max level it and then be able to just kind of get all these because you'd have to go through the process of doing multiple other things. And most will just make an alt character level it and then want to set it up for PKing or griefing or affecting someone's ecosystem around the node or kind of war games before the siege this is why people will maybe use and take advantage of this side of gearing up so bear that in mind we're gonna have to see how that works in ashes of creation i don't really see many people bringing this up but i do think it will be a big factor so when it comes to gear gear can be obtained from several places and this is going to be things like from quests obviously mob drops crafting legendary bosses guild tasks and unique currencies now imagine the guild tasks could be the guild missions or guild events guild wars these type of things so that's kind of guild tasks if you're wondering about there and obviously unique currencies will be certain currencies within maybe religions or factions or other things within the game that to bring down the line and you can potentially get these coins points resources and trade them in so it's like a fairly common thing but what i will say is do remember the best gear in the game is going to be the crafted gear it's going to be something you strive for and as a guild you work together with your different artisans and your teamwork and just resources and this is how you're going to pump out some of that best gear and i think that's really nice to see and it's definitely the right direction and the way they're doing it is definitely the best way to do it because you're just not going to run dungeons get this set and then that's it it just kind of brings in more replayability more utilization of the other systems and and this is kind of what you want to see in other mmos you really don't often see certain things like this it's like the people that have developed the games haven't really thought about long Longevity. they've just thought about something flashy and it's maybe the laziest way so uh, yeah the way they're doing everything when you're taking all the aspects of the game it's really solid so obviously when you get the higher to your gear you're going to need resources that can only be obtained by deconstructing lower to your gear so the reason they've done this is because lower to your gear is always relevant so you don't just kind of oh, i don't need that shit anymore i'll just drop it you are constantly needing to farm it and even when your guild members are behind you new members come in you want to speed them up there's still a reason not just to help them because that's kind of what you should do but also if there's people that like to benefit from it as well there's a reason to grind out these things consistently so it doesn't become old redundant content because certain resources can only be obtained via this and i think that is a really smart player and it's something that definitely is going to work well and complement the game grinding leveling crafting systems massively higher tier gear is going to actually have active abilities on it attached to them weapons weapons and armor sets or pieces. So there's currently three types of armor in Ashes of Creation and that's going to be light which can also be called cloth armor obviously it's going to be the lightest gear in ashes meaning it's most mobile so you're going to be able to move around a lot in it it's probably going to be more focused on magical damage mitigation then you're going to have your medium armor 
which is often called lever armor. Now it's gonna provide benefits from both light and heavy. I presume it'll do what a lot of other memoirs do and it's gonna provide a 50-50 split when it comes to the magical damage mitigation and physical damage mitigation. And there's also hints it may provide other stats such as improved critical chance or maybe things along them lines. So that's gonna be quite good for a DPS who doesn't wanna be as squishy. Heavy armor, also called plate, that's gonna be more HP than light or medium armor and it's also going to focus more on physical damage mitigation so apart from armor being a specific type you're actually going to get rarities in the game and for rarities there's going to be a specific list so obviously the rarer the item the better now you're going to start with poor quality which is early game of course then you've got common uncommon rare and now you're getting into the better tiers you know the harder stuff and the more end game and after rare you've got heroic which leads into epic gear then you've got legendary and at the pinnacle end you've got artifact gear now artifact rarity is going to be reserved for gear that is only one per server so yeah i mean this is fucking high-end super rare i'll be totally blunt i wouldn't imagine um you will be seeing this on your own character or if you do you have been very lucky and it is one hell of a fucking achievement so yeah if you're aiming for that go fucking harder because you're gonna need to once you get into higher tiers of gear you're gonna start to get into gear sets which is also known Known as tier sets. Now, depending on how many pieces of gear you have in your set or you're wearing, you're going to gain bonuses. This is also going to be affected by what tier them gear set pieces are. Also, the appearance of the gear set is affected by your race. So, you will have a racial appearance, which is pretty fucking sick, and I do like that a lot. Now, some examples of the gear sets we've seen is the second sword division and the regalia of the iron lion or even the calf and robes. And now jumping into enchanting and tempering. Now there's going to be two types of enchanting in Ashes of Creation and that's going to be horizontal and then we're going to have vertical progression. So vertical enchantments are going to increase power but they're also going to include things like more damage, more damage mitigation, added effects and added bonuses. However these power increases do come with several risks and this is when it comes to over enchanting your stuff. Low levels of over enchanting can cause items to lose bonuses, they've gained and can cause item decay and even further over enchanting can cause items to fully be destroyed and get resources back and when it comes to horizontal progression on the other hand it has no risk at all does not increase the power but it may just be as useful so when it comes to horizontal enchanting it's all about changing the arm for the situation you're in so it'll change things like what resistance you have so there's really no negative backlash on when you're changing these so I think you definitely want to be utilizing this to as much benefit as possible as you can I also do like the they've done this and they've mixed it up like ah uh, i don't think it's as hard as some of the systems i've seen in games but i think it balances out more and it's not as punishing but it still can be as grindy and as useful the way ashes is doing certain things within the game is just better than most mmos they still have that hardcore vibe and the semi-hardcore vibe but then they mix it up and balance it correctly and they seem to be taking out the shit that is annoying and kind of you know blending it quite well so we've also got enchantment scrolls and tempering which is going to allow the gear to have their rarity enhanced after being crafted but what i'm going to do is i'm going to play a clip of steven mentioning it and explain it a bit more so you kind of got a bit more information directly from him himself if i create an item at a low quality will i later be able to upgrade that item when i have the resources yeah. to do so yeah we, we want to be careful you know <clears throat> so right now as you saw in the stream the contribution of materials to crafting an item results in advancing the rarity of that item. Um, now that doesn't exclude players who don't have the legendary uh, or the higher quality contributed resources from progressing their common item up the rarity tree through enchantments such as uh, scroll enchanting or through tempering the gear. 
Um, both of those can affect the quality and the rarity of the gear that you produce. So with all that gone through, I genuinely feel like Ashes of Creation's gear system is extremely similar to the way it works in early Arch Age, like say 1.0 patches. It reminds me of how the Obsidian gear works, and I imagine he's took a lot of inspiration for that, obviously, because Arch Age and Lineage 2, these type of games are what's inspired him to make the game, and I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing at all. To elaborate on that a little bit more, so in Ashes, you obviously have the tier system. Now, this was also present in Obsidian Gear in Arch Age as you started with tier 1, which was Obsidian Gear, and then it progressed to Ominous Obsidian, and then you'd progress that to Cursed Obsidian, and then you'd choose a specialization, and then you'd continue to improve that through further tiers. There was also how low tier gear is going to give us resources to help make higher tier gear. In Arch Age, you also had this as well, and you needed Mana Wisps to craft a obsidian gear and to improve obsidian gear and mana whips were gotten from. Dismantling magnificent illustrious ethereum delphinad gear which were all lower forms of gear compared to obsidian. As well as that you've got the tempering and the enhancement system and that's going to increase items rarity and that's obviously very similar to regrade scrolls which were in arch age but what they've done I believe is a much better version is they've done it without the RNG chance of failure or degrade at least that's what we know currently maybe they'll add a little bit of that in but i don't think it's going to be as punishing and as annoying as say 1.0 arch age classic for example and i genuinely don't think that's a bad thing i actually think it's a good thing they're doing there with the system and it'll work pretty well i'm quite happy they've done that because some of the rng grind in arch age at times when you were going hardcore with it could be really really annoying and it could be quite tedious and not really enjoyable so all in all i don't think it's a bad thing as we've seen that this system can work and it can work quite well and with the RNG taken out that Arch Age had added in in some of these systems it doesn't make it as toxic to grind towards endgame or as tedious and obviously with Ashes not being paid to win it kind of makes sense that they've done it this way whereas originally the systems in Arch Age where things would destroy and all this other bollocks was based around the fact that you could pay to win and pay to progress massively. Ashes doesn't have that so if they'd fully copied it which I'm not saying they have, but it's very fucking similar, let's just be blunt about it. It wouldn't have worked in the game, and that was one reason why some of the unofficial servers of Arch Age seemed grindy, because obviously the whole game was based around pay to win, like whether people want to admit that or not, like this is the fucking blunt truth of it all. But all in all, that is the armor, and how the armor gear works in Ashes. I think it's a fairly solid setup, and it is pretty nice pre-alpha 2 to see what we're going in there. I imagine they're going to progress in that over the years, and what I will do is I will get into the weapons and how they work hopefully this has taught you summer you've learned a lot and you're more ready for alpha 2 or just generally know more about the game like i said previously though hit that subscribe button turn on notifications helps me out let me know in the comment sections is there anything you guys would add to this do not like this do you actually think it's pretty fucking solid hit the like button give the video a share and as always i really do appreciate you watching the video and i'll catch you in the next one cheers